Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's web conference, Dynamics 365 for Field Service, Connected Field Service Enhancements. My name is Michelle, and I'll be your moderator today. We are recording on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. If you do not consent to being part of a recorded session, we ask that you disconnect your browser at this time. Attendees may access the web conference recording and the deck at the same registration site within 24 hours. We do encourage you to use the messages panel at any time to ask questions regarding content or to request support. To do so, just click on that messages button at the bottom of your screen, type your question into the white text box, and click send. Our presenter team will be responding to your questions via text during the event, but we also have a dedicated time at the end for Q&A. We also use this messages tab to post announcements to the audience, so please look there for some important information regarding the event. Our event production team strives to be a leader in delivering online content. Please help us reach this goal by providing feedback. At the end of the session, a survey URL will appear in that Messages tab. Simply click on that URL and enter your email address and select your responses. We do appreciate your feedback and support in this. And thank you for your patience during these announcements. There will be a brief pause while I start the recording. for field service, Connected Field Service Enhancements. With us today from Microsoft, we have Vivian Huang, Senior Program Manager, Dave Clark, Program Manager, Ben Vollmer, Director of Business Strategy, and Giddish Raja, Senior Program Manager. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ben, without further delay, you now have the floor. Thank you very much, Michelle. So we're going to be spending the next uh, 45 minutes or so talking about Connected Field Service. And some of the enhancements that we shipped um, recently uh, in the Connected Field Service uh, arena and some ways to, to make this better. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little about the agenda. We're going to go through kind of some of the industry where, where IoT and field service are heading and, and make sure we get on the same page. And then we're going to have a, an awesome demo um, to, uh, to, to, to show you this. So we're going to start off just to let you know, first of all, this is all NDA material. Um, this will eventually become public, but right now this is kind of a, a, a early draft of it, so this is going to be under NDA for right now. Um, so please be aware that this is under NDA. Um, let's talk a little about IoT. So Internet of Things, um, it's been around for, depending on who you talk to and how long you talk to, it's been around for a long time. Um, the, the mass market um, availability of, um, of IoT is now kind of we kind of moved from the the innovators to the early adopters, and now we're in what they consider the the early majority. And so we're seeing a lot of companies adopt IoT, and really connected field service is really the the, the next step, if you will, in an IoT journey. And I just want to make sure, Michelle, the slides are moving, correct? They are. We're on slide four. Perfect. Just making sure. All right. Um, and, and so I think it's kind of important when we talk about. So Microsoft, you're going to, you know, those of you who work here or are partnered with us for a while, you know that we're, we're, we're huge fans of the TLAs, the three-letter acronyms. Um, and so we'll throw on connected field service. And really, what do we mean by connected field service? Um, so connected field service is really three components. Um, it, it, it's, it's really um, Dynamics 365 for field service. It's Azure IoT. We'll go through some of those, those scenarios. And it's mixed reality. Um, so with things like 365 remote assistance. So, so when Microsoft says, or we hear the word connected field service, it's really a combination of both field service and IoT, um, and in some cases, the mixed reality components. So that's really what we say when we, meet, when we say connected field service. That's really what we mean. It's, it's different from um, kind of the product. It's more of a solution play for us. Uh, so when we think about field service, you know, again, some of the, some of the components are in field service. And this is really more just a level set because we have some some pieces here later to talk a little about how Azure fits into these. So Dynamics 3CI for field service. The nice thing about the way this is designed and architected with IoT is that when we're managing our demand, we're really on the demand side of things. Um, the IoT devices and information really just come another signal that go into that demand creation and demand planning. And then when we talk about, um, uh, you know, 
uh, IoT. Uh, IoT, by the way, even inside of Microsoft, can seem fairly confusing, fairly uh, lots of pieces and moving parts. So, so the, the easiest way that, that, that I've found is really break it down to two things. You have a managed solution, which is really a, a SaaS offering. <clears throat> so, for example, Dynamics 365 is really a SaaS offering. Microsoft manages the servers. We manage all the updates. We manage the upgrades. Um, IoT Central is a SaaS offering. So, so you're going to see some, some stuff come out here from Grish in a few minutes, some demos of IoT Central. But IoT Central is a SaaS offering, meaning that you can hit a website, spin it up, and away you go. But we also have platform components. So the IoT Hub um, side of um, Connected Field Service has, has a number of components that are kind of build your own um, so solution around that. So when we talk about the Azure IoT working with Dynamics 365 and creating connected field service, what we're really talking about is using both a SaaS offering or a platform offering, and we'll go through some of the architectural differences if you want to, and those two, along with IoT Edge, that makes up the IoT components of connected field service. Um, so you have two different options for your customers, and it really comes down to customer needs, customer demands, um, customer wants, and quite honestly, budget um, will drive which one of these solutions you're going to use on, on behalf of your customer. Um, the biggest investments we've made in Connect Field Service in this release have really been around the IoT Central side. And so we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about IoT Central. We've made enhancements to IoT Hub as well, but really IoT Central is where we've made the majority of the, of the investments um, across the, the board here. And then, of course, along that side of that, we also have partner solutions. Um, that have taken what we what the Azure team has and Dynamics has and really fully expand that out. Um, so, again, not to go too deep in the weeds too quickly here, but but IoT Central is really, because it's a SaaS offering. It actually is kind of a, a closed box. So the nice thing is the devices all talk into a, a cloud gateway, and inside of that, everything is self-contained. Um, so this is not like the IoT Hub version. If you guys on the workshops before, where you got to go in and tinker with stuff, everything's here in one place, and everything is like that gray box is really managed by Microsoft on behalf of our customers uh, uh, around the globe. So IoT Central has a much different architecture um, to the consumer than IoT Hub does, um, but it has a lot it has all the same components. The difference is Microsoft manages those components on behalf of our customers. Um, so with that, I think IoT Central is actually a great fit for customers who have rule-based um, demands. Um, IoT Hub does, does more on the you know, real-time machine learning demands, but the central is really around the rule-based, which I think probably 85 to 90% of our customers are in that rule-based place in their life right now. Uh, so that's kind of it for um, IoT Central. So with that, um, We've got a great demo pr pr produced by Grish here. It's going to talk you through how we made some investments in Dynamics 365 Connected Field Service um, around IoT Central. So, Grish, want to take it over? Thank you, Ben, and hello, everyone. Let me go ahead and um, share my screen um, so I can walk you through kind of what Ben narrated about is sort of an end-to-end um, demo of Hive Azure IoT Central and the rest of the, the ecosystem around the connected field service all come together for an amazing sort of an end-to-end -end system. And can everyone, Michelle, can you just confirm if you can see my screen okay before I proceed? Yes, it looks great. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, again, Azure IoT Central, as Ben mentioned, is a great SaaS offering that provides uh, the IoT capabilities without having a lot of cloud expertise or development expertise, uh, writing code and all of that, and kind of connects together. And it's at azureiotcentral.com. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on Get Started. And um, uh, in this case, I'm already signed in. So I'm going to go provision a new application here. And I know the screen's um, lagging a few seconds, but um, as you'll see is you can sign up for a trial of um, IoT Central uh, without any Azure subscription or without any form of credit card or anything of that sort. Um, but the best thing is even after the seven days, if you go switch to a pay-as-you-go plan, uh, IoT Central is still free for the first five devices. Uh, and if you 
click on IoT Center pricing, it'll also show you a lot of these details. It's just, you know, zero to five physical devices that you connect. Um, they are going to be completely free, and you get about 50,000 messages per month. Um, so it's definitely not something that's going to break the bank. And even when you do a mass IoT deployment, the price is kind of pretty reasonable, and it's based on device, which is very interesting for Dynamics users because it's not based on the number of users that you have, the number of people sign in, and all of those um, sort of good details. And once you sign up for an instance, you can also pick if you want to do a sample dev kit. So, for example, if you have a Raspberry Pi or an MX chipset, which we recommend um, if you want to play around with IoT Central, uh, if you have one of those development devices, you can get started with a dev kit template. But in this case, um, for testing and for learning purposes, we're using a, a Conto, so a refrigerated vending machine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter in my application name. Call it demo December 11th, and I'm going to hit create. And just like that, I was able to provision an IoT gateway and IoT messaging uh, channels, but also sort of the, the foundation to build uh, sort of an IoT application. So all of that um, built just like that, right? Um, and as you can see, you know, I can go ahead and uh, look at my set of devices. And when you see a list of devices, again, you can have different sets of templates. You can have vending machines. You can have coffee machines. You can have HVAC and AC systems. You can have um, wind turbines, all kinds of sets of devices in your kind of uh, environment. Um, but this is the template. The template essentially identifies, you know, what sort of device parameters are available, what sets of commands are available. So if I go and open an, uh, a refrigerator, and you can see that, hey, this refrigerator vending machine has a whole bunch of telemetry that it reports uh, from, like, accelerometer, gyroscope, humidity, temperature, all kinds of good stuff. And because I just provisioned this, uh, the beauty of IoT Central is that it comes with the built-in simulator. So you can start seeing these values as and when um, you provision these applications, so without having to run a separate simulation application or anything like that. And you can also see that I can um, access a variety of settings and properties that are associated with this device template. Um, we can also have commands. So you can define commands to essentially reboot the device or upgrade the firmware and all those kinds of actions that you want to take on the device. And the interesting part is really the rules. Um, because based on whatever measurement that we get, uh, you can do a number of things. So for example, you can say, hey, I want to define a high temperature alert so that when the temperature is sort of greater than the threshold, um, you can do a number of actions. So you can send an email, or you can call a webhook or Azure functions for the developers among you. Uh, but the interesting thing is really you can f uh, trigger a Microsoft Flow workflow, uh, which makes it really easy, again, for a, a non-developer to really kind of connect systems in a secure way and have that handshake for a seamless workflow. And as you can see, um, Microsoft Flow is available on a PayOC Go app plan. So what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to go back and switch to a, an app that I have provisioned previously. So I'm going to go back to apps.iotcentral.com or azureiotcentral.com. So I'm going to open up this demo environment. And again, um, what you'll see is I have um, I have a similar setup, um, just like the sample Contoso that we saw earlier, but I added a custom telemetry parameter called cache drawer which essentially tells you, hey, how full is the cash drawer? Uh, like, for example, you know, you put in a dollar, you put in five dollars, whatever it is, to get your, you know, um, chocolate, um, chips, or ice cream. And again, I'm not trying to taunt anybody on the call and make them hungry. Um, but the idea is, you know, hey, the cash machine can only take a certain amount of um, bills within it. And when it goes over a certain threshold, you want to do an alert. So in this case, what we're going to do is um, we have defined a rule. And again, as you can see, the measurements, because I've been running this application for a while, you can see the measurements are streaming along. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a rule here, um, which is when the cash drawer level is greater than 40, I want to run a flow. And in this case, this flow, so when I open that, And this flow, what it's going to do is um, 
I'm going to go ahead and edit that flow. And I'm just going to expand the different components on the flow here. And what this flow does is it does a couple of things. Um, when a rule, which is the cache drawer level SI, something like that, fires on the IoT Central, and now this is the IoT Central flow connector. Uh, so when that trigger happens, what it does is it uses the flow connector for Dynamics 365, and it creates a new record. Um, and it creates a record in an entity called IoT Alert, which is the entity that we use out of the box in connected field service. Uh, but again, you can connect it to any entity within Dynamics. So this is not just limited to field service. You can connect it to marketing. You can connect it to um, um, sales, to customer service, and any type of system that you're building on top of Dynamics. You can easily um, connect that with the IoT system. And as you can see, when I expand, it shows me what are the different values and different parameters and data that I get from IoT Central and how that gets mapped over to Dynamics. So for example, the device ID on IoT Central maps to the device ID on Dynamics, and you have the rule name, you have the, uh, the body of the, the alert that got triggered, all of that being sent over to Dynamics. Okay, and if I go back here, and lo and behold, of course, you know, we had um, one of the flows that ran a few seconds ago. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go switch to connected field service. And again, as you can see, connected field service is an application within Dynamics 365. And uh, within this application, um, again, as Ben talked about, there is IoT Hub or IoT Central. There's a couple of ways in which you can get started. So I'm going to dismiss this dialog, and you can see in the dashboard, we've been getting all kinds of alerts coming in to the system. So I'm going to go switch to my alerts. I'm going to do a quick refresh here, and there it is. There was an alert that came up just a minute ago. Um, and as you can see, um, it has all of the details, right? Like, you know, what's the type of the alert? When was when did this alert happen, which was just a minute ago? Uh, and it has all of the details of the alert. Of what was the ID of the device? What was the template of the device? Uh, what was the name of the device? And, uh, and lo and behold, also the, the measure, the cache drawer. Again, because we're using a simulator, it's generating some random data, but you can actually get hold of this value. Now, the interesting thing in connected field service is uh, all of this data, especially in the IoT world, the data exchange happens in a protocol called JSON. Um, which is really kind of a JavaScript uh, way of no, um, um, notating the objects. And you can see this is kind of the message, the, the raw message that comes across. But in Dynamics, um, our team has built a great control that essentially helps you visualize that data much better within connected field service. So if you are a dispatcher, a field service dispatcher, or someone that's um, looking at all of the alerts, you can see this information in a much more visual manner. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play the role of a field service dispatcher. And hey, this alert came in, and I know that I need to go uh, send someone to uh, collect the, the cash so that the, the vending machine will be still functional. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and use the business process flow and move to the next stage. And in this business process flow that I have, I want to create a case first, so I track all of the case and issues. Um, so I'm going to pick this for ADATIM Corporation. I'm going to go ahead and save this case. And you can see that, hey, the business process flow fires. It converts the IoT alert to a case, and it does the associations automatically. And I can see the recent case history and all kinds of things that's happening with this device and with this customer. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to pick an incident type. Um, and of course, it's a uh, cache um, draw full. I'm going to go ahead and then save that. And now I want to dispatch someone. So the first step of dispatching someone to collect that cache, I'm going to go to the next stage in the business process flow. I'm going to go create a work order. I'm going to say the work order is kind of predictive maintenance because we know that you know the cache draw has. A little more space, but we want to go ahead and uh, get uh, that taken care of soon enough um, before the machine stops working. 
and I'm going to go save that work order. And again, this is standard Dynamics 365 that's firing off all of the, the components in here to make sure that um, you get all of this information about um, the work order, the IoT alert transfer to the case to the work order. And now I have a work order, work order number 424. Now, as part of the dispatch, what I'm going to do next is I want to send someone, right? So I want to go to the schedule board and see what the schedule of the personnel that I'm working with looks like. And of course, because we're just getting started in the morning, it's a little empty. So I'm going to just take a quick look and see um, that, hey, Joseph didn't really have a lot of work yesterday. So, and he's definitely sort of the right person that's appropriate. Um, for the situation, uh, so I'm going to take this work order, 424, that we just created, and I'm going to assign it to Joseph so that he can uh, uh, take this taken care of in the next little while. Okay, and now, you know, that work order has been assigned to Joseph. It's been dispatched. Um, now, the beauty of all of this is um, a Microsoft Flow connects all of these systems together. So the fact that I've scheduled a work order, we also have other flows within the system. So if you go to Microsoft Flow, and if you search for, um, within the templates, you search for CFS, um, Connected Field Service, that's what CFS stands for. And if you search for it, what you'll see is you'll see a set of flows that um, were published by Microsoft. And the first one is the one that triggered um, uh, the alert, so when you get an alert in IoT Central, uh, which fired the rule, you were creating the record within Dynamics. But we also have a couple of flows that we've configured. One is uh, when a work order is created, we want to go back to IoT Central and update the work order information. And same thing, when you assign a technician um, within Dynamics, we want to update that information on IoT Central. Um, so if I go back to my device, um, in, you know, the refrigerator 2 that kind of triggered the alert. And if I go back and look at the dashboard, um, and lo and behold, you can see the information. You know, this device um, now has a work order, uh, which is 424, and it has a scheduled technician, which is going to be Joseph, who's going to arrive at 10 a.m., and it's going to fix it in about 45 minutes. Um, and again, this is the power of Azure IoT and Dynamics 365 working together with Microsoft Flow because uh, this information can be displayed on a console within the refrigerator um, or it can be any kind of devices where, um, you know, somebody can check this information and make sure there's something being addressed uh, to take care of the issues. So what you saw end to end was you were able to take kind of what was available on a device, the, uh, the real-time information on a device. Um, you were able to parse that information and make sure you ran certain rules to make sure that you're tracking the health of the device. And when something that is abnormal, um, we triggered an alert that went into Dynamics 365, which um, a technician or a dispatcher can use to triage and a sign out, and you kind of came back full circle looking at that work order information within Dynamics. And we did this all without writing a single line of code, which is really the power of the system. And one of the things that I'll say is um, it, it's still not a black box. IoT Central makes it easy as a SaaS service or a web application to manage all of this information. But for the developers, for the partners and customizers um, in the call, um, you actually have access to all of the raw data. Uh, IoT Central provides um, uh, data export capabilities, and it's not just a one-time export, it's a continuous data export. Um, so every few minutes, um, it'll take all of the data, all of the raw data that's available with an IoT Central, and it will uh, pump the data into an Azure blob storage. And in this case, I've got, uh, configured an Azure uh, blob storage account that you can see here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the Azure blob, and I'm going to show you. I know it takes a moment to catch up. Um, so what I'm going to show is I'm going to show the blob. And I'm just navigating through the blob structure. And again, it shows the devices, the templates, the measurements. So I'm just going to dig in a little. Um, and as you can follow, it will show me all of this information. Again, by the day, by the hour, by the minute. Um, 
and um, you know I can look at many of these and as you can see it has a file called AV Auto which is um, um, essentially a Cosmos um, version of a compressed JSON and then we'll definitely talk a lot about it in sort of the architecture section later on but you get the raw data available to you in the blog. Now once you have the raw data there's a lot of things you can do. One of the things the IoT Central team ships out of the box is what we called an analytics solution template. So Azure IoT Central analytics solution template, it's available in GitHub, it's an open source um, repo that has all of the code and all of the components within it. And what it allows you to do um, is, as you can see in this architecture diagram, it can take the raw data from the blob and use a few of the Azure services. Like for example, you can use Azure Functions and Azure Data Factory to transform the, the data from the compressed JSON and transform that into a SQL database so you can report that off of with Power BI. And if I scroll along, um, you can see that this is the report that's kind of generated by this template automatically for you. So you can go from the raw data and make that into a custom visual. But once you're in Power BI, you have the power of um, connectors and you can connect with multiple systems. So you can overlay the Azure data with the Dynamics data with any of the other third party systems that you may have. You can overlay and see that information in a much more compelling way. Uh, but the, uh, the fact that you have the access to all of this raw data means you can do anything. Like for example, you can run machine learning models and you can do all kinds of post processing uh, that you want. Um, Again, end-to-end, -end, this is where we talk about IoT Central being sort of this powerful system, but it's so simple to use. And everything that I walked through, it's actually um, in the tutorial that we have documented. So if you go to our docs.microsoft.com and search for connected field service, you will run into this tutorial that my um, colleague uh, Vivian on the call, um, she helped put together, and it's gonna give you a step-by-step -step direction on how do you configure it, how do you configure the flows, how do you send the information back and forth, and all of that is sort of pretty easy to do. And now I did this uh, without a real IoT device, and it took me only about an hour to have this all configured end-to-end -end and working, but even if you have a real device, like an MX chipset, uh, which I'm going to show you here. Uh, the MX chip, uh, have, um, it, it's kind of a reference developer or a test device, which is uh, Azure certified, and it, it runs about $40 in the US, and it has all kinds of um, sensors and connectors within it. It has a humidity and temperature sensor, it's got a motion sensor and a magnometer uh, and a pressure sensor, and it has all kinds of adapters, like for example, um, you know, it has an IR, it has got a headphone and microphone, and of course it's got a great big display with OLED lights and all the good stuff. Um, and what it allows you to do is all the measurements that we saw in Azure IoT Central, you can connect the, to this device and you can see those measurements measurements in real. And this will give you kind of a great set of starting capabilities if you wanted to build your proof of concepts, if you wanted to build your sort of first applications with IoT and with Dynamics 365, it gives you sort of a great leverage to get started right away. And like I said, you know, the, the tutorial will probably take you an hour or less than an hour, and plugging this device is even simpler than that. So in about um, 90 minutes or less, you'll be able to go from zero to have a fully functional IoT system with a connected device, which is really the power of um, what we deliver uh, with these platforms together. And again, I want to thank Vivian for putting all of this information together and making all of this uh, tutorials and sort of the, the, the functional aspects of the product working in a seamless way. So with that, I want to um, end my demo and hand this back to um, Vivian. Vivian, take it away. Thanks, Girish. Um, Michelle, can you see my screen? Just want to make sure everyone see my screen. Yes, I see, I see slide nine showing. If you can click on Takeover as presenter, you'll be able to drive those slides. Perfect. Uh, 
and thanks for the great demo. Um, from our product group standpoint of view, uh, I will do a quick recap on CFS uh, Connected Fuel Service investment we made for fiscal year 18 and spring and fall release um, with a, a different adoption needs. And now we provide two versions tailored to Azure IoT Central and the Azure IoT Hub. And for the Azure IoT Central, uh, now we provide a bunch of flow template, uh, predefined CRM workflows, and automate the registration of device from IoT Central, and synergize the life cycle uh, across um, alerts, case, work order in connected fuel service side. Um, as the demo just did by Girish, um, our goal is to provide a comprehensive but simple get started experience um, for Dynamics um, and user or partners uh, to uh, bring IoT or infuse IoT into the business application uh, in minutes. So the organizations um, are now able to quickly uh, move from idea uh, to pilot to production without any coding experience. So here I want to highlight a couple of features uh, probably we, we didn't cover in the demo. Um, besides for the flow template and the preview workflows, um, we surface with uh, alert parenting feature. Uh, just imagine I see some messenger on the, on the um, Skype. Like over time, you might be overwhelmed by the alerts from the IoT Central and you have the concern on the flow cost. And uh, as for each alert is coming through per device, and now we allow you uh, parent the alerts in a dynamic dimension. Uh, for example, uh, you can group the alerts uh, by multiple dimension, like uh, group them based on the customer assets or location. And uh, actually, any fields, um, CFS IoT alerts entity or associated entities can be used for your grouping logic. And the other thing we build up is uh, for everything you build up for Power BI, like some live stream um, pulse chart, you can embed it into dynamic solution. Besides for the uh, IoT Central, uh, Givish just works through DPlay, we also uh, a uh, surface couple of features in the uh, area of IoT Hub version. And then now we allow um, people do the device uh, registration to pull in the device uh, from the Azure IoT Hub, or you can register to IoT Hub from the dynamic CFS UI. And once it is done, you can send the command uh, all the way to IoT Hub. And for device categories, now you are able to model device uh, metadata, such as uh, device properties, like uh, the and like the vibration, um, temperature, those kind of device properties, and also the control command you are able to control over the device in a group way. For example, uh, you have like a ten. Um, dampers in your like a building like a control system, you don't need to um, like a configure the metadata of the device for each one. You just do it in a like a batch way in in the device category level, and then we move to the. Uh, device metadata in the context of device twins. Um, so let's talk a little bit of the uh, definition of the device twin. It is a JSON document uh, we maintain for each device to hold all the metadata of the devices. Um, we call these twins because they are always two, one on the device, uh, the physical device side, and the other um, on the cloud side. So they always keep in sync between a device, a virtual cloud um, representation one on the Azure IoT Hub. So with this release, now you are able to sync up all the metadata with IoT device twin in a bi-direction way.
So, Michelle, let me know if you can see the next page. Yes, we're on slide twelve. Okay, sounds great. So here is a few like a detail like a CFS flow template you can like a dive into. Um, the major reason uh, we build a um, couple of them is we want to light up the uh, integration scenario within a couple of minutes. And uh, the two-way um, bi-direction integration and share the message across the IoT central system and the dynamic system are for the purpose to serve us different a uh, role like uh, in dynamics we have the role of like a technician dispatcher they want the uh, IoT information and in IoT central they have the role as a operator builder from the customer's lens so that's why we want to do the two way uh, information sharing okay move to the uh, next one is uh, we hear a lot of customers are talking about like, uh, hey, we are now able to connect our um, device to be enabled with IoT devices. And now we are able to monitor IoT alerts. Now we are able to do anomaly detection and do the advanced analytics. But the key things bring in the drive value to the business application to the to the enterprise is like a, what kind of action we can drive from the IoT insights. So here we leverage a uh, um, dynamic CRM um, workflow capability and we build a demo data package that includes um, action workflow. So um, it will trigger a variety of actions from the IoT alerts with predefined rule, such as command, you can send a command, quick case, or quick work order. And a lot of information coming from the IoT alerts were pre-populated to the command case or work orders. Okay, so for the like uh, IoT um, hub version, uh, I want to deep dive a little bit about like the metadata concept in device trains. So actually, if you see the uh, the graph on the left uh, top side, and uh, you can see there are two types of metadata um, are important to know here. Uh, they are like a desired and reported properties. Um, the desired property is owned by the cloud. Say it's maintained by IoT Hub and given to the device. For example, the capacity of a like a cash collector machine um, can be modeled as a like a desired property in IoT Hub and then sent over to the device. And the, the reported property is something owned by the device. So the device will like a check capacity of the cash collector and then report back to the IoT hub. For example, it reports back say, yes, the cash collector is almost full. So in such a case, so the device has reached to IoT hub and the desired and reported property is now synced to each other. So the whole notion here is we transform the protocol between the uh, physical device or IoT edge uh, with uh, um, the virtual device in the um, IoT hub on the cloud, and then we transfer them with uh, like a JSON format, and then you can do the sync up between them, and eventually um, you you get all the data to the device train in the cloud, and you can do a lot of like advanced machine learning training. Even the local device is done. Okay, I will switch the GIA back to Ben Warmer to talk about our customer story. All right, we just got a few minutes here left before Q&A, so we're going to keep this, keep this brief. A lot of times when we think about IoT, uh, again, we always go back to these kind of small microprocessor-based IoTs. Um, 
one of our partners actually out of uh, out of Kuwait actually did a great job of, of enabling IoT for um, kiosks using Windows 10. So, so, so when you think about IoT, don't always think about IoT as being these small microprocessors. In their case, they actually wrote a, wrote a universal Windows program, a UWP app, that actually collects the data from the Windows 10 device that's already there and pushes it up into IoT Hub. So Swiftel is a great example of a customer using um, connected field service with IoT, um, uh, using a PC, believe it or not, to send the data in, and then actually using RSO to automatically schedule work orders um, against technicians to fix things as they break. So, so Swiftel is a, is a great story. Um, we can go into more in depth. There's a case study out on, on the Microsoft case study site. But just when you're thinking about it from a, from a consulting perspective or from an internal perspective, don't always think about, you know, IoT as always being kind of the, the, the teeny tiny devices that we look at. Um, and then th this is an example here, and if, uh, if, if Vivian wants to talk about it too, you know, McDonald Miller is a Phillies, Phillies management company. They had an existing legacy uh, field service solution, and they use a Microsoft partner called Iconix. And Iconix really handles the device management um, and, and really the flow of the data and the rules engine behind that um, that, that, that rests on top of Azure. So, so in the case of McDonald Miller, they're actually a building maintenance company, building management company. So they're pulling all the data in. Um, Iconics then looks for the rules that establish what's a what should be a, a, a alert versus what's not an alert. We identify the faults, and then we use field service to create the, the work orders um, for those. And then the integration actually happens through um, Azure IoT Hub in conjunction with Iconix. So, so again, because of the, the, the flow of data and how they do things, um, it, it's a little bit of a change of, of our standard field service architecture. So, so with that, um, this is kind of a kind of a, a, a great little look at the architecture that uh, McDonald Miller has and, and how they've built things. Um, using connected field service to make sense um, for, the, for the business that they're in. So the whole idea with connected field service, both in the IoT Hub version as well as in the IoT Central version, is there's a large amount of configuration and customization available for you as, as a customer. Um, we're going to skip this unless you guys want to talk about it, but IoT Edge is really one of those things. And, you know, how does IoT Edge work? And you'll get these slides, and you'll understand that, hopefully, after the fact. And then um, this is an example that one of our um, MTCs use actually to describe the architecture. And again, this is another way you can use the architecture with the IoT Hub version to show how all the pieces work together and how you can either start with Azure or Dynamics or some combination therein to make connected field service work for you. All right, thanks a lot, Ben. Um, so hey, everyone, I am Dave Clark and I am working on technical readiness for connected field service. And if you're like me and you're wondering where to start, um, I would say the three best things that you could do to get up and running with Connected Field Service would be to start off with identifying and outline IoT use cases, either theoretical ones for a demo or actually working with your customers and understanding ways that they can uh, make their inspections more automated. Um, understanding the difference between IoT Central and IoT Hub as a SaaS offering or a PaaS offering. And then from there, I think the best place to start would be to get your first demo set up. And for this, we would recommend using IoT Central, which is perfect for demos and proof of concepts. And that involves setting up a trial for IoT Central and a field service instance. And to help you along this, we have, I'd say, the two best readiness sources are, as Garish mentioned, docs.microsoft.com where we have two step-by-step -step tutorials for IoT Central and IoT, including starts, tutorials, installation, and setup. And additionally, we also um, created, as part of Microsoft Learn, uh, video learning paths. Um, and I'm actually going to post these in the chat to make sure everyone has them with direct links. So with that, um, while we have everyone on the line, are there any questions that were unanswered that anyone would like to bring up at this time? You 
can either speak or post in the chat. Uh, so, so Dave, I guess well, let's, let's, if we can kind of go through the questions that are, that are that have been asked already, kind of and just kind of add some more color to them. Um, so, so I, I guess the the difference between central and hub, and I'll let Garish and Vivian kind of give their spin, but you know, it really should be: is there ML involved or not? Um, how simple are the rules? Um, th that's the big one. Uh, the other question come up around, around flow licensing. You know, flow offers you fifteen thousand flows a month, included with Plan One. Um, per user, so, so there's a significant amount of flows available here. So I don't, I don't foresee because the flow only kicks off when the um, the anomaly is being raised. I, I don't see flow being you you, uh, you, you being being um, inundated with 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 flow. All right, let's see. Here's some more questions here. Um, uh, device view with live measurements as a web resource. So, 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 so Jasper, that is part of, um, I think Vivian, the Power BI embedded, um, that, that's, that's available now, correct? Yes. Um, so, 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 so Jasper, what I would do is there's a thing called Power BI real time. Um, on LinkedIn, I've got a quick article on how to, how to cheat and set up the IoT hub stream directly into Power BI real time. Um, the other thing you can do um, is take the data out, and again, there's many architectural ways you can do this. Uh, like, for example, you know, Grish showed you how you can export those files out. You can take those those files that that um, the IoT Central puts up into IoT uh, into Azure Blob Storage and put them in Cosmos DB, or you can have IoT Hub directly put them into Cosmos DB, um, and then you can create a virtual entity using Dynamics 365 to read that Cosmos DB entity. And show those device readings using VEs instead of using Power BI. Um, both of those are, are available and options for you. Um, so uh, benchmarking around flows. Uh, if, if you again, flow is only for the anomalies. So, so if you're doing more than the anomalies, it's, it's probably not. Um, you're probably engineering something wrong. I had a customer that, that I saw the other day that was taking all the data out of IoT Hub and putting it in Dynamics 365, um, and that was really just a case that they were doing it wrong. Um, so you're right, flow limitations would take effect there, but flow is where the anomaly data goes to Dynamics 365. The, the core data itself, you can put in Azure SQL, you can put in blob storage, you can put it wherever you want to put it um, to have it make sense to your customer. And then there's a question about connected field service, whether if it's available on trial. Um, I want to clarify that, yes, it is indeed available on trial. Um, and uh, today um, it, you, you can go to the app source and um, install the connected field service solution. Um, but one thing that I sh we should have called out earlier is it gets better. Um, going forward, all field service installation in, in, in uh, Dynamics 365, whether it's a trial or if it's an active plan, it will include connected field service solution automatically as part of the installation. So that should be available um, going forward, uh, essentially out of the box for all field service instances. Yep. And, and, but you yeah, can yeah, install it today, either way. Yeah. Yes, either way. And there is a um, question on the line mentioned uh, with field service, is there likely to be a field, field engineer license or just people consuming the app? Um, I, I, I think if I understand the question, um, so, so, so the field service user is, is the field service engineer license. Um, um, and, then, and then people consuming the app um, would would be if like your customers that those are included um, with the external connector charge. So, so so in field service there is a there is a per user license for the engineers. And there is a question about the comparison between like an Azure Logic app and uh, Microsoft Flow. So I want to answer in this way. So Flow is more of our Microsoft SaaS offering, more targeting to the like a citizen user with non-coding experience. For the Azure Logic app, it's more of the pass offering, you can treat like the Logic uh, app actually is like a back end of the Microsoft Flow.
I, I guess a simpler way, Vivian, because I'm, I'm, I, I live in the south here and I'm a simpleton, um, is Flow is used with IoT Central, Logic Apps is used with IoT Hub. So, 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 so that's kind of, uh, I guess, Mario, that's kind of an initial kind of gating is Flow is for Central, Logic App is more for the, for the, for the PaaS offering. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions here? While we're waiting for any uh, final questions as we wrap up here, I would like to point out that I've put a link in the Messages tab to a short survey we'd love for you to complete before logging out today. If you've enjoyed today's web conference or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event in the future, this is your way of letting us know. Again, you can just click on that link. It will take you to a new window where you enter your email address as well as your responses, and we do appreciate your feedback in this. And I'll hand it back to the team as we wrap up with with any final questions or final thoughts before we close? Uh, I think I'd just like, you know, again, feedback from everybody. I, I mean, feedback on Connect Field Service as, you, as you're running into, you know, deploying this, you have, you have questions, challenges, um, comments, and feedback. I know, I know everybody on the team here is, it looks forward to hearing how customers are deploying this in real life. And one thing I'd love to add is if you haven't uh, played with it or tried it out yet, um, like I said, it's literally going to take less than an hour. Sign up for an Azure IoT Central trial, and if you already have a Dynamics 365 instance, or sign up for a Dynamics trial as well and get them connected, and that will kind of trigger a lot of good thoughts and sort of um, ideas around how you can sort of instrument and use this in real-life scenarios. Because many people think IoT is this – Thing out in the future, but it's here and the time is now, so don't wait to get started. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot, team. And this does conclude today's web conference. The recording and the deck will be available at the same registration site within 24 hours, so make sure and check back there for those important resources. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter team, and thank you to you, the audience, for logging in and joining us. Have a great day.